he stopped and pointed to the sky and asked me to look at the sky. And as I looked up, the sky became just an ominous blood red and began to feel like it was going to crack open like a delicate eggshell at any time. But the colors were more see-through. It was almost like a fourth dimensional place. The, the sky was so ominous that I, I became very frightened and I knew that time for humanity, even at age seven, I knew that time was running out. Something was going to happen. The being told me that there may come a time within my lifetime where it would be necessary for them to come and remove some of the population from planet Earth until it was safe to return. They said, if you see the sky as we showed you, you will know we are coming. There will be no time to make a decision whether you will go with us or not. But you need to think about this over your lifetime. That was my first encounter with non-terrestrials. At seven years old, I knew that my life would never be the same. I had quite a few experiences when I was young. As a matter of fact, they started when I was young. And my earliest recollection of my first experience was at the age of six over at my grandmother's house. I'm up on the porch and I notice two strange looking kids floating toward me they did not walk they came floating toward me i could hear them talk but they didn't move their mouth and this is all very strange to a six-year-old and so they wanted me to go with them and i told them i couldn't because my mama told me not to ever leave the yard and uh but they said it would be all right and for some reason, after they said that, I said, okay, I'll go with you. And I don't know how I got inside, but the next thing I knew, I was inside. And I go over to this table, and there's some toys on it. The first toy I pick up is a round silver ball. All I had to do was just think of where I wanted it to go. And I would start flying it around the room, just like that. It was so cool. I trusted these beings because I was having fun with them. After playing with those toys, I was on the front sidewalk of my grandmother's house. I don't know how I got there. I don't know when I got there. And there was this round silver airplane, and I was waving goodbye. When I would tell my parents or my grandparents if it happened over at their house, it did not feel good. And here I am telling the truth. And these beings, these strange looking creatures are coming in my room and taking me out at night. And I want to tell someone about this and I do. And the next thing I know is that they're telling me that I'm wrong. And I know it's right because it's happening. The difficulty at that time in saying, you know, this is what happened to me, but I can't prove it. Too bad you weren't there. Too bad this doesn't happen to so many people. Made me uh, feel the urge to climb up for the longest time. And then it started to be a real difficult situation. Who can I trust to tell these things to as they continued to happen? People that talk about their experiences tend to be made fun of. And I didn't want to be made fun of. I didn't think that that was the right reaction for a lot of this, uh, for a lot of these experiences that I was having because I knew I wasn't crazy. And when I would speak about it to certain people, they would, they, they would give me one of these, you know, raised eyebrow looks like they didn't know what I was talking about. So I learned very quickly if you wanted to have friends and you wanted to fit in, that you didn't talk about these things. I must tell you, even to this day, though, um, if I'm home alone, uh, you know, so I keep the lights on as long as I possibly can before I go to sleep. I do that. I'm 44 years old. One night, 
night, I had an experience where I was, I was lying in bed, and all of a sudden, the room was filled with this white, it was almost daylight. And there was a being on the edge of the bed with the pear-shaped head and the wraparound eyes. My heart was racing, and I was like, what? And I pulled the covers up over my head. That's what I did. And I felt this, like, whirlwind. Whoosh. I pulled the covers down, and it was gone. It was like nothing ever happened. It was just an eerie quiet. It was a rough time for a while. Um, my ex-wife, my wife at the time, she walked with me through it, but I knew it had to be for her, you know, it had to be some stressful. I mean, of course, I wouldn't be lying about this, but here it is that, uh, you know, your partner's saying that beings from another place are coming and strange things are happening. And um, I'm sure it was, it was interesting, uh, to say the least. My experiences up and through my early teen years were all very friendly, playful with them. Then as I got into my teen years, especially when I hit puberty, then it got really scary. They would shine a bright light, say, on my knee or my chest and I would have very little idea of what they were doing and they would not explain to me at all. I can't say I felt a great deal of pain, just humiliation that I would be laying there without clothes as they examined me repeatedly, regularly. They brought me in front of an entity that I believe that most people aren't meant to see because of how horrifying they are and how oppressive they appear, but in certain circumstances I feel that they need to bring people in front of this sort of higher authority being which looks like a giant insect or a praying mantis. I was just absolutely terrified. Just had this piercing stare, just made me feel like dust sitting in the chair, just completely powerful. He had expressed to me this awesome displeasure that I was not going along with what they wanted to go along with. And the basic message was, just go along. I was obviously terrified of the experience. It was overwhelming. And for days after the experience, I was just dumbfounded. And I would spend the whole day afraid to go to bed at night and I would try to sleep as much during the daytime I would sleep when I got home from school sleep in the short hours after dinner just so I would be able to stay up later at night so I wouldn't have to face them again it is a very scary thing to think that a being that was not from this earth and God only knows from where showed up in my bedroom or showed up in my living room and wanted to poke needles in me or do some horrendous thing terrifying it's terrifying, and I would hope that no one would have those experiences. I have had those experiences. I, n I would never want to repeat them again. I found myself upstairs in my bedroom listening to this horribly loud noise, and I, it, it frightened me so much, and I went downstairs, and I thought I was going to, I was going to open that front door and run like hell. But when I got downstairs, my dog was plastered up against the front door like she was paralyzed. She couldn't move. And this horribly loud sound was coming from the back of the house where the kitchen was. And so I inched my way back there and, and to my amazement, three or four beings tried to drag me and take me physically. This was happening on a nightly basis. They were in my room, they were in my house. And I said, no, you are not going to do this. I'm not going. 